Hi there, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and today I am enjoying the spring weather. Um, it's finally greened up here in Vermont. It took a while. We had a cold, wet April um, that just seemed to drag winter on forever, um, but now it's just beautiful outside, as you can see behind me. And uh, Rick and I took advantage of the beautiful day yesterday to do a project that we've been planning for a while. Um, and that's build some new garden boxes. Um, and today I'm going to share how we did that. Um, so there's been a number of iterations of our garden over the years. We started with just a fenced area and planting um, just into the existing ground. Um, but there were problems with that because our soil up here is very poor and even with regular amendments and compost, um, I just wasn't seeing a very high yield out of the garden. So um, we went back to raised beds, which has worked really well the last couple of years, and um, we've gotten better and better at creating these uh, raised bed boxes out of found materials. Um, so, you know, it's, it, you can build them out of uh, traditional lumber. You can use uh, pressure-treated lumber to get a longer-lasting box. But um, I like to say that when you're building your own garden from scratch, especially if you are putting in a lot of infrastructure, your first tomato is a $600 tomato. Um, because you have to buy soil, you have to buy compost, you have to buy uh, tools, and then if you're building boxes, you're buying you know several hundred dollars worth of lumber. Um, so it all adds up quickly. Uh, and instead of spending that kind of money, um, Rick's uh, company that he works for uh, regularly gets shipments on pallets and so that's what we're using for these garden boxes. So to make um, garden boxes like the ones uh, behind me, and I'll show some more pictures as well, um, you're going to need some pallets and you want to um, be fairly choosy in the style of pallet um, that you're picking up if you can, if you, if you have a pile that you're going through. Um, you want to pick ones where the slots are spaced as close together as possible and that will help keep the dirt in the box. Um, you also want to look for any, you know, cracked slats or pieces missing or falling out. Um, get the highest quality ones that you can. And if you have to, you can also patch um, problem areas. We had one in this latest batch that had one broken slat because of a knot that was in the way. So we just um, screwed in a small piece from another pallet over that and patched it and that worked just fine and easy. Um, other things that will make the job easier are some power tools, a uh, power drill, and uh, a circular saw. Um, if you don't have these, you might just check with a friend um, to see if, they, if you could borrow one for, for an afternoon. Um, or in, I know in a lot of urban areas now there are like tool libraries where you can go and you can check out um, shovels and saws and, and different items. Um, and either for free or for a very low per day rental fee and so that would help you keep the cost down as well and, and mean that you don't have to buy everything especially if you're you're not going to be using it regularly. The other thing that you'll need to assemble your uh, pallet boxes are some long um, outdoor rated screws um, and I I'm sorry, I don't know the technical term, but we use decking screws. I'm sure there's other kinds of outdoor screws that you could use. Um, but you want something a nice, you know, three, three and a half inch length um, to make sure you can get through all the different components of the pallets and really secure those together. Um, so to make the pallets, and I will include um, detailed instructions in the blog post um, that goes with this video, as usual. Um, but just an overview, you're going to cut the pallets decide how tall you want the boxes to be, and then cut sections of pallet uh, in even in even depth. So we went three boards high on these that we just made. Um, you could make them deeper, you could make them a little shallower if you wanted to. Um, I like a nice deep box because the idea of kind of square foot gardening or compact gardening is that you're allowing the plant's roots to go down instead of out and so you want to make sure you have enough depth there for that plant to be really happy and be able to soak up all the nutrients that it needs. 
Um, so pick your depth. Um, decide how many palettes you need based on, on that. And we've made palettes in both a, a double length, so, so two palette widths um, on the side and then a single palette width on the edge. Um, and then these latest boxes were half size, so they were just a single palette width um, all the way around to make more of a square shape. So you want to lay the pieces out on the ground and try to fit them together as best you can. Now you're not, you know, really um, adding anything to the palettes to give it more structure. You're not cutting small pieces of timber or cutting shims or trying to get everything perfectly level, but um, just lay the pieces out on as flat a piece of ground as you can and try to get it to line up as best you can. Um, a lot of times you'll find that the palettes are slightly warped, so it, it helps to have one person holding the pieces while the other person's screwing them together. Um, but keep in mind, you know, Better Homes and Gardens is not coming to judge you. Um, we're not building these the way Tom Silva would on this old house. So, you know, pretty close, pretty good is good enough. Um, so you're going to lay those out and then pre-drill your holes. Um, and we attached our pallets on the inside corners just to kind of hide the screws and provide a little bit more stability. And we also drove the screws through at an angle. So instead of going straight on, you're kind of towing them in, um, which gives you a little more surface area for that screw to bite into, and again, go through multiple layers of the two corners um, that you're drilling into. So you're gonna pre-drill your holes and then switch over to your screwdriver bit and drill those together. We used two screws per join, so eight screws for each small square box. And, um, and the other thing we like to do is line them with weed paper. So then you're going to put it where you want the box to be and line it with weed paper to prevent the grass and other stuff from coming in. Um, that'll also help hold the dirt in better because the dirt will still want to spill out of those slats between. Um, so adding a little weed paper will help keep the dirt inside. And then just fill it up with a really good uh, dirt and compost. Again, because we have poor soils up here, um, even though Rick and I do compost um, most of our food waste, um, we don't make enough compost with two people to really fill out a whole garden. So um, we ordered in from our local hardware store, they have organic compost and nice topsoil. So we ordered in a mix of that and used that to fill up the boxes. Um, every year I find out that I have to top them up a little bit because the soil settles uh, year after year. So from there, just plant a whatever you want. Um, I mostly do vegetable gardening, so it's a little early um, to plant those vegetables just yet. Things like hot peppers and tomatoes really like warm to hot weather, um, and we don't have that quite yet. We're still in the 40s overnight, so I need to wait a few more weeks, um, but I can start to plant some cool weather crops like peas and lettuce, so um, those are going to be going in soon. I also transplanted some herbs from an older um, bed uh, made of tires and put those into one of my new boxes that's going to become a little herb bed. The other type of planter uh, that we typically use is old tires and those work really well for things like tomatoes, um, potatoes, eggplant, anything in the nightshade family that really wants hot weather because the tire soaks up the heat from the sun um, and radiates back onto the roots and the bottom of the plant, keeping it nice and toasty, and it, it also holds water. Um, so those things also need a lot of water, and I find um, that the tires do really well. So they don't look as nice as the boxes, but um, they're pretty effective, and it's a great way to use up old tires, too. So we made a few new tire planters. Um, we made some for my mother, who wants to start her own herb garden on her side of the driveway, and on those, uh, we actually took a, a carving tool, a Dremel electric tool, and cut the top rim off the tire so that you have more square footage uh, inside the tire planter. Words of the wise, if you're going to um, hot cut uh, a tire, make sure you wear face protection, uh, eye protection, and don't wear nice clothes because you're going to get hot rubber. <laughs> fling flung up at you. Uh, Rick learned that the hard way uh, last weekend when he was doing this, but they came out really well. Um, so, you know, the planter box is made out of pallets because they're not treated for being outside. They will rot over time, 
but I figure I can get a good five, six years, and because they take less than an hour to make, um, it's certainly worth the effort. Uh, found materials, buy a few deck screws, you know, an hour of your time, and you've got a garden. And if you have to replace them every few years, that's okay. So again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Um, let us know, send me pictures of your garden if you have one, whether you're using raised beds or any other method. And uh, feel free to send in tips that you use for gardening. Thanks a lot for joining us and tune in next time for more Vermont Crafts.